Today we are worshiping with both of our congregations here in one place. Merry Christmas, Fredonia Presbyterian. Feliz Navidad, Gowanda Presbyterian. And a Joya Noel to those near and far joining us this morning. The Lord be with you all. Last night, even from our homes, was a joyous occasion. So much so that we may not have noticed one of the last lines of scripture from Luke. The part where he tells us that after the shepherds left, Mary pondered all these things. She and Joseph had already been told that Jesus was special, but it still must have been surreal for all these people to show up to the manger seeking her son. It's still a bit, little bit of a mystery to her that her child is God in flesh. So if today's service has a theme, it might be mystery, but not the scary kind, the holy kind, that kind that stops and asks you to ponder all these things that God has done. Many of you have probably done body prayers before, but this morning we are going to do a call to worship that engages our bodies. God went to a lot of work and took a lot of risks to become one of these. So as we call ourselves to worship, it feels appropriate to celebrate our skin and our noses and our knees and elbows. You can stand or you can sit, whatever feels most comfortable to you. And this is for all ages. And if you're a kid, we really need you this morning to help show us how to move our bodies. So, God, we come to worship today grateful to stretch our arms. As we stretch our arms, may it help us stretch our imaginations. As we stretch our arms, may we picture something bigger than we imagined to become more inclusive of those around us. Friends, unclench your jaw this morning, roll your head around, and ponder what you need to unclench in order to celebrate the body of Christ. Now close your eyes, take a deep breath. Smell. This is one of our senses that is underappreciated. What do you smell? Do you smell last night's cookies <laughs> or tonight's lunch? What is your smell telling you this morning? What else in the body of Christ and in our bodies is underappreciated? As we bring our awareness to our legs and flex our feet and stretch our toes, we thank God for all the places we have traveled to this year. God has walked with us through valleys and has hiked with us to mountaintops. And so take a moment and think of all the steps your feet have taken this year. Hold your shoulders, roll them around. Give your shoulders a squeeze or someone next <laughs> to you. These shoulders, these shoulders have held a lot this past year. It's important to let them heal, to relax and have a Sabbath. Even in troubled times, let the body of Christ hold you up and give your shoulders a rest. These hands, these hands of yours, look at them. They have knit hats. They have brought food to give. These hands have organized food pantries. These hands have cut flowers to honor those who have died. These hands have collected school supplies. They have folded coats and scarves to bring to children. And so hold out your hands and behold them. 
these hands are something to celebrate. And your face, your face. <laughs> Maybe you have chapped lips this morning or puffy eyes trying to <laughs> wait up for Santa Claus. <laughs> your face is an incredible, unique gift that God gave the world. And in your face, others have the chance to see the love of God because your face beholds God's love. Find a mirror, take a selfie, I'm serious. Post it to our Facebook accounts. Watch your pets, look at your face with hope for a treat <laughs> and with love in their eyes. Give thanks for your eyebrows, for your ears, for the wrinkles that prove your laughter. Your face is amazing. I like your face. Your face is good too. <laughs> And so now, with our whole bodies and our whole selves, let us worship God. Our scripture reading this morning is from Isaiah chapter 9. Listen for God's word. But there will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders the rod of their oppressors, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born unto us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Fredonia Presbyterian Church has this wonderful tradition that on the Sunday that is either Christmas or after Christmas Eve, that they read a book, a children's story about Christmas. And so today I bring to you The Night of Las Posadas. And this book, going with today's theme, has a little bit of mystery. The Night of Las Posadas by Tommy de Paola. In a village high in the mountains above Santa Fe, preparations for Las Posadas had begun, going on for weeks. 
Sister Angie was so proud. Her niece Lupe and Lupe's new husband Roberto had been chosen to portray Maria and Jose, Mary and Joseph. Sister Angie had been in charge of Las Posadas for years and years. It was she who trained the singers who followed Maria and Jose as they made their way around the plaza in old Santa Fe and finally into the courtyard of the palace of the governors where an empty manger waited for the birth of the holy child. Now, Sister Angie said, speaking to the two men who would play the devils, here's a picture of what your faces are going to look like. She wanted to make sure they knew how to paint their faces red with black eyebrows and beards, and that their red stained costumes were just right, especially the red capes and head caps with pointy red horns. The devil would snarl and hiss as he tried to keep Maria and Jose from finding shelter. The plaza was so big that two devils were needed to rush from the balcony to balcony without being seen by the crowd. Sister Angie always made the costumes for Maria and Jose herself. Blue and white for Maria, brown for Jose. Stand still, she told Roberto. Lupe, I hope he isn't as fidgety at home. Oh no, Tia Angie, he's just nervous about being Jose. Ah well, Sister Angie said. Let's just go to the church and look at Maria and Jose. They will give you inspiration, Roberto. Miguel Oviedo, the Santero maker, had made a beautiful carving of Maria and Jose for the golden jubilee of Sister Angie the year before, 50 years as a sister. Father Vasquez had put the carving in a place in honor of the church. As Christmas drew near, it was moved near the altar rail. They stood looking up at Maria and Jose on their way to Bethlehem. Just think of the carving and try to look like them, Sister Angie told them. I will, promised Roberto. At least we don't have to worry about a burrow. Las Posadas didn't have a burrow in the procession. Maria and Jose walked. The burrow had only made problems, so they stopped using one years ago. Finally, it was the night of La Posadas, and Sister Angie came down with the flu. There's no way you can go tonight, the doctor told her. Walking in all that cold weather, and they say that snow is coming. They will just have to get along without you this year. For the first time, Sister Angie would not be at Las Posadas. Don't worry, Tia, Lupe told, Lupe told her. We will make you proud this evening. In the streets leading to the plaza, men were busy putting the farolitos in place. They would be lit as soon as it got dark. Wood for the bonfire was stacked in the courtyard just off the plaza, ready to be set ablaze when Maria and Jose entered. Well, one of the men said, it looks as if it will be a white Christmas. Snow is on the way. Even as he spoke, flakes drifted down, but a little snow never stops Las Posadas. Up in the village, the singers, the candle bearers, and the devils piled into their cars. They wanted to get down the mountain before the snow, which was beginning to fall heavily. Do you have the music? Where's my guitar? Wait, I forgot my gloves and earmuffs. I'm so nervous. It's a good thing you're not Maria, you'd faint. Me, me, me. I hope my voice is loud enough. I've never sung the devil before. It was the same every year. Sister Angie looked out her window. Yes, she wiped away a tear as she saw Roberto's old pickup pull up outside. Lupe and Roberto got out and rang the doorbell. They wanted Sister Angie to see them in their costumes. Oh, Maria and Jose, you look wonderful. If I had had my way, I'd offer you shelter right here. Now give me a kiss and be off. Roberto and Lupe were the last to leave the village. Roberto's pickup had been acting up lately, and the deep snow didn't help. 
A sudden skid and phew, the motor died. What to do? I'll walk ahead and see if I can get some help, Roberto told Lupe. Wrap up and I'll be back before you know it. Down in the town, everyone had gathered. The snow had tapered off and was falling gently. The farolitos were lit. The plaza looked magical. Where are Lupe and Roberto? Father Vasquez asked. It's almost time to start. The guitars were tuned. The horn player had warmed up. The singers were ready. Even the devils were ready. But no Roberto and Lupe. And everyone knows that you can't have Las Posadas without Maria and Jose. Suddenly down the street came a young couple. The man was leading a burro, carrying a young woman. We're friends of Sister Angie, the man said. Roberto and Lupe are stuck in the snow on the mountain road, so we have come to take their place. We know what to do, and we thought our burro could be in the procession too. My wife is going to have a baby, and it would be better for her to ride. Let's go then, Father Vasquez said gratefully. The candle bearers led the way, followed by Maria and Jose. The musicians followed, and then came the singers. Out into the plaza they went. Everyone knew their part, even the burrow. They stopped at the first door. Oh, let the holy couple in. Give them shelter. Let Maria rest so that the holy child can be born they sang. Jose knocked with his staff. Maria looked down from the burrow and smiled sweetly. But the devil appeared. No, no, don't let them in, he sang. Look at them, how poor, how wretched. They have no money, the crowd booed and shouted. The procession moved on, knocking on one door after another. Sometimes the devils popped out at them and the crowd booed even louder. And sometimes they knocked and no one answered. It was one of the most beautiful Las Posadas ever held. Even the young woman playing Maria was about to be a mother, just like the mother of the Holy Child. Perfect. They reached the gates to the courtyard. Once more they sang, asking to be let in. This time... No devil. The gates opened wide. The bonfire blazed and everyone rushed in. A little pushing and shoving, but that was all right. Everyone just wanted to be near the manger. Well, you certainly saved Las Posadas, Father Vasquez said, turning to thank the young couple who had taken Lupe and Roberto's place. But they were nowhere to be seen. Maybe they didn't know that they were to sit in the special place near the empty manger. Father Vasquez, we are so sorry to be late. It was Lupe and Roberto calling out as they rushed into the courtyard. Did we ruin everything? No, no, Father Vasquez said. Sister Angie's friends were here. They led the procession, but now I can't find them. Go quickly and sit by the manger. What friends? Lupe whispered to Roberto. Sister Angie woke with a start. Las Posadas would be over. Everyone would be having their hot chocolate and cookies. The villagers would be back in an hour or two. I hope Lupe and Roberto did well, she thought. Sister Angie was feeling so much better. She looked out the window. The snow had almost stopped. Drifts covered the rooftop and the streets below. I'll just go over to the church and light a candle, she said to herself. She bundled up and put the key to the church in her pocket. Sister Angie crossed the street and stood in front of the church. Footprints in the snow on the steps led up to the church. She didn't think too much of it. Maybe some turistas? They came at all hours, expecting the church to be open. Inside the church was dark, except for the candle burning in front of the blessed sacrament. I'll light a candle in front of the carving, she said. She took an unlit candle, 
and struck a match. The candle flared up and settled into a steady glow. Sister Angie knelt down and placed her candle in front of the carving. Oh, Maria. Oh, Jose, she prayed, eyes closed. My heart will always be open to you so that the holy child will always have a place to be born. Sister Angie opened her eyes. In front of her, she saw wet footprints leading to the carving. She looked up. The cloaks of Maria and Jose were covered in fresh snow. Friends, let us pray. So Lord God, you have come to us. You didn't wait for us to become good. You didn't stay away until we searched for you. You took the initiative. You entered the world you made as a creature so that you could enter the world of our experience and meet us where we are, just as we are. And so we know that as we pray, you hear and understand and you answer. 
And so come into our world again. Bring your peace and love and trust into a world of war and hatred and suspicion. Come into this land again. Bring your healing into a country ravaged by broken communities, broken relationships, and bodies broken by Alzheimer's, cancer, hatred, greed, and all kinds of diseases. Come into your church again. Bring faith and inspiration into the community that you call to be your servants in the world. And come into our lives and those of our loved ones again. May we know in the depth of our souls today and every day that God truly is with us no matter what life brings. God, we welcome you and your healing love into our world. And this we pray in the one who was born this day, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our worship is over, but our service to the world has only just begun. So go out looking for the holy mystery. And as you do, may you know the love of our Creator God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ born this day, and the comfort and constant companionship of the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen.